All right, welcome. This is my next world record that we got. This is the uh, 50 retimed 5025. And we're gonna watch back the world record and it is with early hammer manipulation. I'm very excited. I have not watched it back yet. We get to watch the rerun. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, I'm powering on a task that gets early hammer. It's not anything impressive, but I'm powering a task that gets early hammer with my console on the same frame. If we power them at the same time, and both of us get the same amount of lag frames that when we get to world two, I can start lining it up and trying to get early hammer. Uh, it's very exciting. So you're gonna see some weird things. For example, in this level right here. Yeah, I do that so I don't get any lag frames in the level. And so I don't get any lag frames. I, I need to make sure I don't get any lag frames. So by getting no lag frames, if you look at the task window, you can see it says 99, well, it says 164 now. Those are the lag frames. I probably also have 164 lag frames right now. I just updated one, two to do that with the music note so I don't get any lag frames. Thank God I do that. Thank God I do that. Because uh, I was getting a lot of annoying lag frames. All right, and we do the fortress. Luckily, there's no lag frames in the fortress. I mean, I haven't created a lag frame yet. Very nice. No lag frames or nothing in the fortress. Fairly easy. You guys think we can get two in a row? I think, so apparently this was my second early hammer in a row. I think I got three yesterday. I got four today, I think. Or I got three today, I can't remember. All right, there's no lag in this level, thank God. Well, there's lag at the start. That's why I grabbed the beetle and got the hell out of there. You have a good feeling about this run? Anyone who's watching YouTube, the chat that you see on the screen is not live today's chat, obviously, because I'm watching the video back. All right, um, so again, it shows that I'm ahead of the task, which is fine. Uh, I don't need to be ahead of the task by this much, and it's okay if I'm behind the task a little bit at some parts. We only call it a task because it is a tool assisted speedrun, but it's not really a speedrun. And it's filled with RTA strats and very slight slowdown so that if I get bad RNG in World 1, I don't fall behind the task. Like, the task video gets all movements to 2 except for 1, which is a slow World 1, so... And that's to allow me to keep up. There I got my fire flower, and there I modify my score so I don't get extra lag frames in World 2. Uh, with my new video that I just released on YouTube about a week or two ago, I know it's not that new, but I do talk about uh, how my score affects lag frames. Um, if you want to know more about that, you should check it out. Uh, the actual copy of Mario 3 can affect lag frames in a different way as well. And it's all about lag frames when transitioning in and out of levels and inside pipe transitions and stuff. Very, very weird stuff that you would never think would work. So I'm modifying my score on the airship right now by stomping on enemies. Um, essentially what I'm doing is I'm matching my score with the task, but having an additional 50 coins. Um, because I don't want to get four coins in 2-2, I only want to get three because four coins is a little annoying. And the task doesn't have to worry about annoying stuff because it's a movie, it gets it every time. Oh, you guys got the music a little too loud? Looking at my meters, it doesn't look like it's a little too loud, but I can turn it down a bit. I really didn't think the music would be too loud, but yeah. Um, I'll, I'll turn it down now. Luckily, we're only out of World 1, so it's fine. If it's a wee bit too loud, it's manageable, but yeah, we'll go, we'll go to like here or something. Let me know how this is. So for those of you who don't know what I'm doing with the tasks, um, I'm going to line up into one so we get the same end level timer because a lower timer counts down faster, gets you out of the level. So I line up with the task here, and if I started on the same frame and didn't have any additional frames as the task, then I'm on the same frame, essentially, 
uh, as the task. So we're gonna get to the end of this level and I'm gonna use the Lewis script, just a visual cue of when to jump and line up with the movements of the Hammer Brothers that I want. So you can see it building, boom, and then we jump. So we see in the level transition, uh, you can watch as they fade out or fade in how I timed it. Looks like I timed it pretty good and I got the exact movement that I wanted. Now I do the same thing with 2-2. Uh, and 2-2 has a three frame window and uh, I jump on the middle frame. So we have a good frame, good frame, good frame. That gives me the movements that I want. I jump on the middle frame so that if I'm a frame late or frame early, I still get the right movement. Um, so we'll see what we get here. We'll see if it's a frame late or early. It looks like I was about a frame late. I got saved, dude. I got saved hardcore here. As you can see, the Hammer Brother gave me what I wanted, but I was late. But that's why, that's why you jump. That's why you aim for the center frame so that if you're late or early, you can still get the right frame. Thank goodness for that. And then the fortress is the hardest one to get all together. You have a good frame, a bad frame, and a good frame. So it's bad, good, bad, good, bad. So it's two good frames in between a bad frame, which sucks. Um, but I actually switched it up because it's very hard to be frame perfect. So I'm actually jumping on the bad frame here, assuming I'm gonna be one frame early or one frame late. Um, there's gonna be a lot of people who are like, oh, it looked like it was frame perfect. You can't tell the difference between one and two frames with this game, it's very hard. So even though that looked frame perfect, I was actually one frame off, or I powered on the console and the emulator one frame apart, right? Which would explain a lot. Right on, so I stopped the task and I continue the run because I got the early hammer. I avoid the music box and now the run actually continues. So now we track mistakes. Uh, so now I don't have to worry about lag frames. Now the run continues on like normal. So now we get to judge the game based on RNG and all the crap that can happen. Uh, any mistakes that I make. This is attempt 23,041. Uh, pyramid went great. And luckily with the playback, we get to fast forward through the airships. Yeah, so I got a movement of two. So I have to remember that. I also have 22 coins. So I have to make sure I modify it in 3-1. Uh, so we'll uh, fast forward past the coin ship here. Or not coin ship, but the airship. Pretty much coin ship. Got a good boss fight here. I know I got a movement of two, so I have to react a little bit faster right there. I know he jumps. No off-screen wand grab. Dang. I mean, I off-screen wand grab went great. So I saved the 13 seconds because I avoided the hammer brother where the last early hammer that I got, I got the music box in World 2, so the time saves right there. Now I don't have to fight the hammer brother in World 5 or avoid him. Or sorry, I do have to fight him. I don't have to avoid him. All right, so because my score is 22 and my tens digit is seven, if I get an odd time with my end level timer when I beat the level, it will increase by five because odds will change the tens digit by five. Evens won't change the tens digit. So I gotta get an even time on my end game timer so that it doesn't increase by five because whenever I beat a level, my tens digits will only ever increase by five or they won't increase at all. It'll be five or stay zero. So I need to get an even time so it doesn't increase because if it increased by five, I would have got a two, which means I would have got a coin ship, which means I would have had to reset. So there you go. So now I'm safe because I'm going to get coins here and everything will be fine. Is the music better? I almost lost it there too. Okay, as long as the music's better. Also, I almost took damage there on that cheap cheap. I should have taken damage on that cheap cheap, but I didn't. This run had a lot of risky stuff in it. Almost coin ship. Very nice. Very nice level. So, so far, a little bit of time loss is here. Uh, mainly due to having to wait for my timer in 
Um, and I got Runaway Bro, right? So in my mind, anytime you get Runaway Bro after 3-3, you might as well go for door three because the run's probably shot anyways. And I got door three. So unfortunately, even though I lost time in 3-1 waiting for my end level timer and I did a couple turnbacks in 3-2, I still saved a lot of time with door three and the Hammer Brother came back. So I got Runaway Bro, but he came back and I got Top Pattern here. So really not a good World 3 saved by Door 3. And then there you go. No Runaway Bro. No Runaway Bro. So uh, yeah, we continue on as normal. I know the Hammer Brother's not going to run away again. What's the world record now? You can wait and watch. Alright, very nice. And luckily, we're guaranteed to not get Runaway based on the Hammer Brother. He would need, I would need to do two levels to get Runaway now, so. Um, and sadly, we did extra map movements here, and we got both top patterns. So, there is a good chunk of time to be saved in this world, but we got Door 3, so it's, it's, it's hidden behind Door 3. It seems like there's not... Nice, very nice. No mistakes there. So the goal is to ride the minus 13 and get pretty much a normal warpless run from here on out. Normally how you guys see warpless runs go is essentially what we're aiming for while getting, you know, the early hammer manipulation time saves. Very nice. We got the H jump. Very, very nice H jump there. All right, it's pretty good. The flicker, I don't know why opening windows flickers. Um, so yeah, now we're at the end of the world. So we just got our airship. So luckily we're watching on Twitch. We can fast forward. I love the fast forward strats. It's so nice. You watch, uh, see for the fire kill. I can't remember if I go for aggressive. I think I always try and go for aggressive here. I got the... So I went for aggressive, but she did jump forward. So unfortunately I didn't get the perfect, but as you can see, I saved 2.3 seconds, which is really good. All right, so now we are on the ideal run and we are in world four. And we got the, uh, the tough strategy here. You don't want to underrun or overrun at the start here because you'll bump the, uh, the pipe or you won't make the jump onto the second pipe. Very annoying. Take some practice to get used to, but once you get used to it, it's uh, pretty consistent. And I'm not even talking about the piece I'm just talking about the first jump at the start. Jumping on that second pipe is like the worst part about the level. It really sucks, so. Hammer Brothers, I need to cooperate. I only want to fight that Hammer Brother that you can see on the overworld map. And luckily we got a movement of two, so we're okay. Pretty good, very nice. Very nice. Uh, we have the visually pleasing level next and the Hammer Brother moves down. So I'm getting a little worried because when he moves down like that, right? The, the moment he gets clustered with the other Hammer Brothers, it's it's over. It's, it's over. Ooh, sexy level. I know you guys like it. Sexy level. You love that level. Uh, for anyone wondering, watching this on YouTube, we are actually at 45 EH nips right now. Just goes to show. And I did this run yesterday. This is a world record from yesterday. So we get a lot of early hammers in our streams, guys. We we almost got the world record again today. We needed to get no hands. And we would have beat the record by like eight or nine seconds. It was crazy. It was a crazy run today. Also, that fortress is very, very difficult. <sighs> So that hammer is really, really getting in my way here. And thank God we don't see the other hammer brother, but we did get a movement of four. 
which is really annoying. I think that's one movement of four, I'm not sure. But I know that was a movement of four. Okay, did I miss my super swim here? I don't think I did. No, I didn't, okay. Also, another thing to add to quality of life, I do have a Retro Tink 5, so we will get better quality than what the OSSC shows, but I don't want to switch out the OSSC because I have a very nice groove of early hammer manipulation right now. So as soon as we get a good warpless run where I'm going to stop, I'm going to switch out and we'll get even better quality because the OSSC leaves annoying color scan lines. All right, right here. You see the Hammer Brothers right here? I make a very big gamble. A very big gamble. This is a very, very annoying spot. I put the Hammer Brothers to sleep and they're asleep for two levels. So I do this level, then I do this level, but this Hammer Brother can move left and up after I do the Fortress. The whole purpose of using the music box is to not fight the Hammer Brothers. So think about it. You use the music box to not fight the Hammer Brothers, and then you fight a Hammer Brother anyways. So not only do you get the extra Hammer Brother time loss, but you wasted the music box. So this is a giant gamble here because the Hammer Brother can go left and up after the Fortress. Very, very annoying, and all it does is add additional stress to the run. That's it. That's all it does. I don't know if you guys can hear it in the video. I have myself turned down so I can like talk, but I can hear myself. I'm complaining about it. I'm bitching about it, which I should be. It's fucking annoying. So hopefully after the fortress, the hammer brother at the bottom is facing right. If he's facing right, he will always move to the right, which is like how the hammer brothers work. I explained that in one of my hammer brother videos on YouTube. If you guys want to check it out? That'll be there. I explained just like what speedrunners look for with the hammer brother movements and stuff. So now I'm kind of stressed. This whole run has been stressed with door threes, runaways, coin ships, all of it. Luckily the Hammer Brothers facing right and I do get to save it. He very rarely does that in that situation, so. Luckily we got that World Core airship. We're definitely not watching the World Core airship. Thank God. Okay, we know our fire kill for movement of one, very easy. Try and go for Austrian wand grab, don't get it. And now we continue our lovely world five. World five right here. We do our P-Wing strat, it's normal. We have all the same items in all the same places as a normal warpless run without early hammer. We are now, you know, back in control. The biggest difference with early hammer is using the hammer in world two and then not having a hammer for world four. That's the only difference. We don't have any extra music boxes or anything. We're good to go. We didn't waste anything. No movement of four, thank God. Nice little tail swipe there. Nice little juicy time save there. Well, I mean, it's not a time save because I think I did that in my previous world record. I can't remember though. But it definitely adds. You guys like my coin count too? Don't forget about my coin count right there. So that's a good coin count. It's gonna change soon though. All right, so that is a glorious Hammer Brother movement. That's exactly what you wanna see. You want those Hammer Brothers to stay away from each other because they'll just do mo movements of four constantly. It's really annoying. So far, this World 5 is amazing. This World 5 is very, very amazing. I like it. Nice level. This level's not much of a level that anyone uh, really overthinks or stresses about, thank goodness. All right, good map movements over to the Twisty Castle. We don't really have any items to use in the Twisty Castle, which is fine. It was so, it's so weird that the P-Wing strategy in 5-1 is a time save over the normal warpless route and eliminates RNG for World 5 and World 4. Uh, mainly because it's so rare to not see Fire Mario in the warpless run until you get to World 6. So it's just like, it's always so weird to me to see him 
you know, without fire flowers. It's so common, right? I bet there's people who join my stream and see, see, you know, bake basic Super Mario and they're like, oh, he must have made a mistake. Which most of the time, yes. And that is a great Hammer Brother position. I do not want, or no, I do want to fight the Hammer Brother in this world. That's right. I do want to fight him. Oh wait, no, sorry, I don't want to fight him. What am I talking about? At least I don't think I want to fight him. And here goes the first mistake right there. Wow, so it's about a second and a half time loss plus taking the damage and grabbing the extra mushroom. So this is a little bit over two second time loss. I've timed getting P-Speed versus not getting P-Speed and that's a little over a second, but it takes an additional 30 something frames to take damage and re-grab the mushrooms. So that is bad for me. Nice, Hammer Brother move to the right. Use my star, very nice. So that was pretty good, except for that. So then I lose that and then I barely build P-Speed back and then I have to do turn backs. I definitely lost over a second there. I'm very, very annoyed at that because this World 5 is working great. Getting good RNG Hammer Brother movements. That's how it works. That's how it always works. You get the good Hammer Brother movements, but unfortunately, what can you do? So we got pretty decent Hammer Brother movements except for the last one that we just got because now we have to do extra map movements, right? Obviously with the structure of the map, after you beat this level, you want to go straight down to the next level, but I have to go left and up, fight the Hammer Brother, then go back down, right, down. So extra map movements cost me time. So I actually have very big time save in this world. Not an optimal chest grab either. So I have a very nice juicy time save in this world. I can't, I got movement of two there. And I don't remember what movement I got here. And this will be a good indicator. I'll be able to see what my A press uh, on the castle is here. Okay, we got 88 coins, but not a big deal. Made sure we got our mushroom card. Our A press is, 2623, that's good gauge. I, I wanna try and remember that. 2623 as a personal reference. Nice, we got a good fire kill. Go for off screen wall grab. And unfortunately we don't get it. And I still saved 0.8 seconds in that world. I still saved 0.8 seconds. I was not supposed to save any time. All right, here comes world six. Uh, Jesus clip saves a little under three seconds. It's like 2.9. Yeah, it's like three seconds. All right, so I got bad pattern with the Hammer Brother, which is fine. And the Hammer Brother switch, that's exactly, I want it. I want the Hammer Brothers to switch once and then separate. If they do that, then based on the map design, as long as they do movements of one, it's impossible for me to fight them. It's impossible for me to fight the bad Hammer Brother. You want one switch and then them to just do movements of one, because with how many levels I do until I get to that point, it's impossible for him to be on the tile, right? If they do another movement of two, then he can be on the tile or marathons or whatever. So let's see, we got a movement of two. So the Hammer Brothers did switch back. I'm a little worried about that. All right, we did get P-Speed. I forgot if I got P-Speed in this world, we did. That makes this even harder. All right, movement of one. Hammer Brother at the top is the one that we want. So we're a little worried here. We need them to either switch one more time or just move down and then I get lucky with the Hammer Brother movement. You can chalk it up to a 50-50, either he does or doesn't, I guess. It's not exactly how the Hammer Brothers work, but makes us feel better. 50-50 sounds better, doesn't it? 
So yeah, if they, if they switch, which is also scary because they could marathon, it's very annoying. Let's see what they do. And they switch and they didn't marathon. So you see how he's on the tile that he's blocking, but I have one more transition. So no matter where he moves, I'm safe. That's why you want him to switch once and then move away from each other. Because it's impossible for me to fight him at that point. It's very nice. All right, we got the fortress and we got robbed of the lag frame. So we have a little bit of time in this world right here. I didn't get to keep P speed. Went a little slow. I'm a little nervous. I finally avoided all Hammer Brothers in a run. Thank goodness. It took me about a week to uh, to get avoiding all the Hammer Brothers. Like five hours a day. So thank thankfully I got it. I mean, I'm going to lose a little bit of time, which sucks, but... We got more important things like wall jump and make sure that, yeah, that hammer brother. So we got three movements of two and the rest were movements of one in this world. So technically I can save as long as I copy this world one and get better movements. I could save over over a second and a half in this world. Cause I think I lost over a half a second in that fortress so far, which is kind of nice. That second is something. So world five, we can save like three or four seconds with just a good simple world five, no problems. World 6, same thing, no problems, good RNG, another second and a half, so that's good. Boom, we got wall jump first try. So we have to get P-Speed in 6-4. And we have to get wall jump first try and skip the bro and get good movements. Everything else goes fine, we should be able to save time in this world. Odds are we're probably not going to save time in this world in the future. This world is so hard, man, because there's most of the levels are fairly easy. And they all work the same, like despawn, either you get it or you reset, so you're fine. Right, wall jump, you either get it or lose time. 6-8, uh, you never you never really mess up, that's the same. 6-4-1 uh, is fairly consistent with stuff, you know, as long as you get the spike run, you're good, so. I lost some, I lost some pixels there, entering the door late. All right, so we are done world six. Three movements of two, all movements of one. Uh, pretty hard to actually compete with. That's tough. All right, we go for the stomp kill and we go for the sub pixel manipulation. The sub pixel manipulation, guys, is Mario right here. And when you move one pixel right perfectly, your sub, your sub pixel is zero. And then as you move forward, It'll climb all the way to 15, and then when you go back to zero, Mario will move one pixel. So the idea is to get a sub-pixel of 15, which is would be left one pixel. So the idea is you want to move right one pixel, and then you'll you'll automatically, by default, have a pretty low sub-pixel. Then you start tapping left to move right one pixel. I'll slow it down for you guys. For those of you who don't understand, and you guys can get a good idea, you're going to see me move right, and as soon as I move right one pixel, I'll have pretty much a low sub pixel value because I know I'm tapping lightly and then I'm going to want to tap very lightly to the left until you see Mario move one pixel. Take a look. There you go. See, I moved one pixel there. I moved one pixel. Now I'm going to turn and I might move a little bit, but I won't actually move a pixel until you physically see Mario move a pixel. All right, so now I'm tapping left. Now I move, so I only moved left. I didn't actually move on the ground. I just turned. I'm still on the exact same pixel tile. See, I moved there, Mario's feet moved, but I didn't move along the ground. I didn't move one pixel. We're waiting. There it is, you see that right there? That was the pixel move. Let me show you one more time. You guys can generate a better understanding, okay? See that? I moved right there, but I didn't move on the ground. Mario just moved his body because I'm trying to move one pixel. And right before I grabbed the wand, I moved one pixel to the left. Boom. You see that? Sub-pixel manipulation. Very weird stuff. That allows me to get first try clip in 7-1. That allows me to get first try clip in 7-1. All right. 
Now my time is very good, so I really, really desperately need some clips. I get my clips. Now, if I move too much to the left with subpixel manipulation, I won't get the clip. I have to land on subpixel 14 and 15, which is how it goes. And you can see chat is blowing up right now. They're very happy for me. People are subscribing and they're super excited because now a, a run is getting pretty juicy. Uh, we still have to do Fast 7-2, which I made a YouTube video explaining everything about what I'm doing right now. You should check it out. Very scary to do, but we nailed it. Give it a lot of practice. Uh, it's very hard work. And we got pipe to, we got a perfect pipe to pipe as well. Boom, right in there. You can't really do that at level any faster unless, unless you use a P-Wing. Unless you use a P-Wing. Sorry about the flashing. It's just me opening a window and closing it. All right, 7-3. Naturally lags a lot. Very all over the place. Boom. Lack to jump. So after 7-2, uh, you're calmed down for a little bit. You're pretty stress-free. 7-3 uh, is a very easy level. People like to call it 7-3. Uh, inventory is very basic right here too. I know all my items, they'll always be in the same place as long as the run went the way it should. You know, not getting any extra Hammer Brothers, getting extra items. Now we use our P-Wing. So now we're gonna set up for another sub-pixel manipulation. Um, I will slow this one down so you guys can get a good idea of what it is that I'm doing in this level as well. Now before, for 7-1, for the standing clip that I do, so for 7-1, the standing clip that I do, I wanna get sub-pixel 14 or 15, and remember there's 16 sub-pixels in every pixel. Once you land on subpixel 15, if you move right one subpixel, you'll move on the ground a pixel because you cycle from subpixel 15 to zero. It's just it's just units of measuring Mario moving on the ground. Mario in every one pixel there's 16 subpixels. Mario won't move a pixel until he's moved 16 subpixels. Works the same way for left and right. Right? So if I sit there on subpixel zero and I move one subpixel left on 15, I'll move a pixel. If I move one subpixel right back to zero, I'll move a pixel. And every one subpixel back and forth from 15 to zero, I'll keep moving on the ground. No, I don't mean subtile, I mean subpixels. You're confusing yourself. I mean exactly what I'm saying, subpixel. Um, and if you move left one subpixel and go to 15, if you keep tapping left, like I've, like I've explained before, I'm drilling it into your guys' heads because I know it can be complicated for some. But you won't move again until you get back to subpixel zero, and then when you wrap back over. So, 7-1 works with subpixel 14 and 15. So only two subpixels out of 16 work, very difficult. But, 7-6 works with subpixels three to 11. So the idea here about what I'm gonna do is I wanna move one pixel to the right and then I wanna tap just a little bit more to make sure I'm past subpixel three. So we're gonna try that here. So watch Mario, I'm gonna shuffle until I move one pixel. See how I didn't move? You can, you can tell because my toes, where my toes are lined up. My toes are one pixel past this black line, right? See, I shuffled there, but I didn't move along the ground. I'm just moving subpixels. There you go, I moved, but I moved quite a bit there. So I'm gonna tap very lightly. There you go, so I did one more little light tap. I'm pretty sure with how much I moved there, I'm probably at like subpixel 10 or something, just under what's allowed to work. So now I can do standing clip from subpixel three to 11. And it, it, I got it, I got it. So I got both pixels, I got both clips. Now, the first try clip for these manipulations that I just explained for 7-1 and 7, only work for the first try. Once, if you miss it, it's back to random, baby. And if you don't manipulate with your with your movement there, it's all random, so. So World 7 is going fantastic. I go for a, a very aggressive level here. Uh, where I do a duck jump right here to get past everything, and then I do a jump to avoid that. Very nice. If I take damage, that's a time loss. Keeping P-Speed in this room, always a freaking nightmare. But we did it. Oh, 
All right. So, I have a choice here. This world record, or this run, is at minus 17, and I haven't failed anything in World 7, which means I know I'm saving time in this World 7. I know my time is going to be better than minus 20... I, my, I know my time is going to be better than minus 17 exiting this world. I know it is. But if I go for 7-9 and I nail 7-9, just the first two clips of 7-9, I'll be on a 49-minute pace if I get no hands. Nope. I wimped out. I wimped out. I'm sorry. I wimped out. But I know I'm saving time in this world, even if I don't do a perfect fortress here. I did wimp out, but we still have 7-9 as the backup. And I and I I did a very good job. That was great. I did a good job. Thank you. Alright, so World 7 went well. I mean we could have saved another 10 seconds or some crap if we did 7-9. Um, but that was a great World 7. That was fantastic World 7. Alright. Freak you auto scrollers. Yeah, we go for the kill here. Uh, we just do stomp kill. I do music box before the fortress in World 7 so that the, the boss jumps into me. Uh, so I save a little bit of time there. And boom, we got a fat, juicy gold. Minus 24 seconds. If we would have got... Let's see. If we didn't make our mistakes in World 5 and the rest of the run happened this way, we would be probably minus 27 or 28. Very scary. All right, so we fast forward. We just got auto scrollers. Um, the auto scrollers are perfect when I play live. The, the suspense is insane. I got to concentrate. Don't mess anything up. Don't read chat too much. Don't mess around. Don't start talking about crap. You know, chat is always going wild, guessing the hands. I'm like, I'm super nervous here too. I mean, it, it's very scary. And one, man. And it was, a, yeah, it was a slow hand one. Hold on, I'm just gonna rewind it. And I wanna see how much time I actually lost. So I got pulled in by the hand at 44, 44, 55, pretty much. Let's see what our time is when we exit. Forty-four fifty-five. We're at ten seconds now. We're at twenty seconds. Twenty-one, twenty-one and a bit seconds. We lost twenty-one and a bit. So we can save twenty-one in World Eight. Rough, man. More auto scrollers. The stress is real, guys. All right, eight-one. We're still on world record pace, right? We're minus 24. The hand cost me 21 seconds. I'm still on world record pace. I got to clutch this out, man. Still very nerve wracking. I don't have to do a turn back for the card as well. Yeah, dude. First hand, 21 seconds, man. Could have been less if I would have got that hammer snipe. All right. This level is always so awesome to watch. Get the get the the sun snipe. I almost missed the sun. Only on world records do I miss the sun. Maybe I broke the curse there. Maybe I broke the curse. All right, we decided not to use the star here because it's a time save not using a star. Going to your men menu and using the star is time loss. Yes, I knew I missed the H there. A little time save there for me. We got to call this the, the Nirvana hammer throw here.
I don't know why it didn't kill him. So there's time save there as well. Dude, if I would've got no hands, holy shit. All right, last auto scroller, fast forward. Bowser's Castle. So the time is so close, I'm not gonna go for elevator clip. And I need to make sure I don't miss the one-up clip here. If I miss it once or twice, it's too much time lost. Thankfully, I got it. It's been a while since I've done this top path of Bowser, because every time I'm here, it's on a crap run. And I just go for Bowser's Basement for the memes, right? But thankfully we did this nicely, very nice. Nice, and we secured it. Once you kill Bowser, it's like less than 20 seconds. I think it's like 17 seconds or, so, or seven, six, it's 18 seconds. There we go, we did it, and we split late. Very nice. We did it, we, we clutched out a world record, we finally got it, and it's a world record with a freaking hand, man. With a freaking hand, that is so, that's so cringe, right? It's so cringe to think about, like, how the run was so good that I could get a hand and still world record. And it's very, very frustrating because if I would have just got no hands, this category might have been dead for a while. Not completely dead, right? It's, it's, all I gotta be is minus four seconds going into world eight now. That's it. And, I, and that is a lot to say because all my time save is in world eight now. No hands. You just tuned back in thinking it was a new world record? Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Well, thank you guys for watching and as always, like and subscribe to my video and comment. I want to hear what you guys talk about the video. I want to hear your thoughts on all the garbage that I just put myself through. And I'm not done. I'm still streaming every day. So make sure to check out twitch.tv slash Mitch Flower Power. Yeah! Right on.